Matthew chapter 8, verse 2, continuing where we were this morning. Where it says, And behold, or lo, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. In essence, this indicating this indicating the basic fact of worship coming through submission to Jesus Christ and that this experience of worship gives us a healing from our loss which is the main reason for our separation from from God as he abides in his glory now please note that the teaching from this morning is not complete and we cannot depart this day before we finish it it is extremely significant that we finish it and I offer no apologies for continuing with the teaching irrespective of any physical circumstances which of course I am not looking at please note as well that the teaching is deliberate it is targeted it is well paced and it is purposeful when I say deliberate I mean it is premeditated by Christ it is planned it has been executed already in the eternal realm in the spiritual works of Christ and this is the basis on which we continue to minister in Christ Jesus so for this there can be no apologies because we are not ashamed of this gospel which we so desperately desire to share with others please highlight to me once again that Matthew 8 and verse 2 is as it were a hub the centerpiece for Matthew's teaching as it pertains to the fact of worship coming from our submission to Christ Jesus and the end result desired by God is this experience of worship referred to by Jesus in John 4.24 as worshipping the Father in spirit and in truth which we have so often quoted now we know that there is only one gospel in all the epistles however the carnal mind insists on making all the epistles appear to be different so that each letter can be used to come up with a different gospel whereas we know that the underlying truth of all the letters is the same they point to one testament one gospel one system but the carnal mind cannot see the underlying truth and therefore the difference in the physical expression is highlighted or stressed making a different gospel so depending on which letter you stress you have a different gospel now the carnal mind can only understand scripture literally take scripture at face value so that when it says baptism the carnal mind takes it to signify water baptism because it has no access to the eternal realm and therefore cannot comprehend this fact of there being a spiritual way in the eternal realm and that it is possible for us to access this spiritual way and be immersed in it and if the carnal mind takes scripture metaphorically 
it understands the metaphor parable as if it points to something else in the physical realm since it has no access to the eternal realm. God gave himself for us, he shed his glory so that he could spiritually create us after experiencing our lack and weaknesses in the age of the prototype, the age in which God experienced what it would be like to be each son planted in the physical universe he had not yet created. He took on himself the combined lack and weaknesses of all sons planted as the means to exist outside of his glory and then took the experience as the means to plan our spiritual creation which he implemented in an age that was characteristically different from his own experience of existence or being in the ages previous. Once we were already safe in the eternal realm as original spiritual creations he then planted us in the material creation, which means we entered into the foreign experience of an existence in lack called the physical condition. We became spiritually comatose, spiritually unconscious. This is our problem, that we have slipped into a coma of spiritual unconsciousness from which we need to be aroused. Christ's remedy is the offer of the declaration. Please underline that. Christ's remedy, the antidote for the poison of the physical condition is the offer or is his proposal in the declaration because the declaration is a proposal. It is something that he is offering us access to and an experience of something that is far greater than the experience of the natural existence. Christ's remedy is the offer of the declaration in, in himself as he abides in a suspended state between our physical condition on the one hand and himself in glory on the other. In other words, he is a buffer and he acts as a buffer between us and God. Please underline that. Pay attention to that term buffer. Webster's two says buffer is a device used for shining or polishing. Now, just looking at it on the surface, it appears not to apply to our situation in Christ. Think again. Christ uses himself as a buffer to buff us and to make us shine, make us become like spiritual communications pointing to him in the eternal realm. As we are healed and we can exercise our minds in the spiritual work of the eternal realm, we express a theosebus, a physical expression, or a logos paraclesis, an inspiring teaching that gives others access to the spiritual works that we reflect in a physical way. In this sense, we have become spiritual communications of Christ. Webster's 2 also says that a buffer means something that lessens or absorbs the sharp of an impact. A buffer is something that lessens or absorbs the shock of an impact. In this case, which appear, appears to be more in line with what we are saying, is Jesus absorbs the shock that the Father would have on us. He shields us from the glory as did the rock shield Moses from the effects of the glory of the Lord as the Lord passed with his back to Moses. Please turn to Exodus 33. 
Exodus 33 and verse 18. The Hebrew writings. Exodus 33, starting in verse 18. And he said, and Moses said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness and the word that was translated as goodness in Hebrew is tub, which not only includes goodness, but it also reflects the aspect of beauty of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, and the welfare or the sense of fulfillment that we derive from an encounter with the Father. And he said, I will make all my goodness, beauty, joy, and welfare or fulfillment pass before thee and I will proclaim the nature of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy to whom I will show mercy praise the name of the Lord please note that the Greek that the Hebrew word that was translated as pass is over which means to cross over in Hebrew it is used of any transition which is of great significance because in verse 19 the Lord is also speaking of the fact of there being a transition some sort of change from one thing to, the, to another which we have to assume and which we have to imply is this transition from the experience of the original spiritual creation that makes us righteous or acceptable to the Father so that we can re-emerge in Christ in this experience of goodness there is a transition that we can experience in this process so that we can in fact experience what the Lord said is his goodness, his beauty, his joy and his welfare. It reflects the reality of this transition that takes place in the eternal realm because we are hidden Christ and therefore experience the Father. It is as it were a foreshadowing of what the Lord is about to speak of in the subsequent verses. In verse 20 he says, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. We cannot look upon the Lord. His glory would destroy us. The Lord cannot come back to this earth in the essence of his total glory for fear that he would consume the universe when the Lord God, Christ Jesus, returns from his inner sanctuary, from the innermost depths of the darkness that is hid from us because we are blind, not because he's in darkness. When the Lord returns, from the ages of glory unto this realm you can be sure that he will consume it and that is why verse 20 in Exodus 33 says for there shall no man see me and live the Lord cannot express his glory physically or else 
we would be consumed by it. Verse 21, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place near by me, near to me, near where I am. It's not where I am. There is a place near to where I am, like on my right hand. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. Notice that the Hebrew word that was translated as stand is notsab, to station, or stationed, residing in a place next to the Father, but separate from Him, is this sur in Hebrew, or rock, and it is represented in the image of a cliff, a high place that is a huge rock with a precipitous fall that you're on a cliff and if you depart from where you are you are going to be destroyed is this image that is presented in the Hebrew word Sur it is not just a rock but it is a huge rock it is a huge boulder that is also represented in the image of a cliff figuratively it is a refuge that Christ Jesus is our refuge he is where we can resort to before we come to the Father for protection he is a refuge for our protection from the full impact of the Father And the Lord said in verse 21, Behold, there is a place near to where I am in the age that is separate from me where I exist in your weaknesses and in your lack for the sole purpose of taking you to my glory and thou shalt stand or be stationed upon this rock or cliff or refuge verse 22 and it shall come to pass while my glory over to cross over when there is this transition from the age of spiritual creation from being hidden Christ into an access of the glory of God as Christ re-emerges or resurrects himself in his own glory and it shall come to pass that there be a transition and that I will put thee in a cleft in a fissure in a fine crack in a narrow crack that is in this tool this huge rock and will cover thee with my hand while I cross over that Christ Jesus crosses over with us in him while we are in him there is this transition from existing outside of the glory of God to Christ existing and re-emerging in his own glory because he has the authority he has retained the authority to do this and will cover thee with my hand while I cross over make the transition and I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts but my face thou shalt not see what I'm speaking of is that Christ is our buffer he is the living eternal Christ suspended who lessens or absorbs the shock of an impact of the glory of God and he absorbs it while he retains us in himself while he hides us in himself Jesus absorbs the shock that the Father would have on us he shields us from the glory 
as did the rock shield Moses from the effects of the glory of the Lord as the Lord passed with his back to Moses. At the same time, Jesus shields the Father from the full impact of our physical condition as he absorbs us into himself. We are hidden Christ and then are taken into the age of glory. That is why we say that Christ is a buffer. Webster's 2 also says that a buffer is one that protects by intercepting or moderating adverse pressure or influences. Christ protects us from the glory and protects the Father from our physical condition. Christ intercepts our journey from the physical realm to the Father, begun by the Holy Ghost, and moderates our influence and the influence of the Father. Webster's 2 says that a buffer is also something that separates the entities as a neutral area between two conflicting powers like a demilitarized zone between two enemies Christ acts as a buffer separating us from the Father before we have been prepared by Christ to meet with the Father because before we are made righteous acceptable to the Father by the temporary experience of the original spirit of creation, we and the Father are powers in conflict. He opposes us and we oppose Him. He sends the offending word and we reject and resist it being in the physical condition. This is our lot once we remain continuously in the physical condition. God is at war with us and we are at war with God and there is no making it of any lesser impact than that because this states the case exactly as it is in the instance where I have described to you that a buffer is also someone or something that lessens or absorbs the shock of an impact which is what I want to highlight out of all these essences of Christ being our buffer this is the one that I particularly want to highlight and in this case Jesus absorbs the shock that the Father would have on us. He shields us from the glory and at the same time Jesus shields the Father from the full impact of our physical condition. As he absorbs us into himself, we are hidden in Christ and then are taken into the age of glory. Please turn with me to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 3 where it says in the King, King James Know ye not that as many as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him there is this essence there is this essence of being baptized or hid in Christ or immersed totally in Christ as if in water until you can no longer see the person who is being immersed in that body of water which is the shadow that we are baptized or hid in Christ and because of that 
Romans 6, 4. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, that we experience this resurrection as Christ emerges by his own authority, by his own ability, by his own power, if you wish, into the ages of glory. Can you hear me? Note that Christ exists in an eternal state of suspension between the physical condition and his existence in the glory that he exists in an eternal state of suspension for our sakes in this experience of creating us spiritually while he tastes our weaknesses and lack in separation from the glory because of our lust he constantly tastes this lack or lust he has no lust but continues to taste our own lust as he is suspended as our eternal Christ I say Christ's remedy for the spiritual coma is the offer of the declaration and faith which the wider church does not know nor teach since they have rejected the same declaration in Christ I say Christ's remedy for the spiritual coma is the offer of the declaration and faith because to the Son, to those who are created before the material creation as original spiritual creation, submission automatically follows the declaration and then there is the spiritual connection. The spiritual connection to the Remo works and the original spiritual creation gives us access to the glory that neutralizes our lust which is healing it is sufficient to say that lust neutralized is healing since lust neutralized allows us to recognize the, go the glory and temporarily remain spiritually conscious exercising our minds in the spiritual works of the eternal realm the easy part is the glimpse in milliseconds the difficult part is to retain the knowledge of the millisecond through submission through paying attention through giving heed by meditation on the word which is the declaration and finally through execution or follow through we have to pay attention to the revelation regarding what exists in the eternal realm revelation is not about the physical element it's not about the physical scripture but is translated by Christ into a theosebus a physical work or word we have to pay attention to the revelation to the full extent of follow through if we want to retain eternal realm knowledge revelation without follow through is death and eternal realm knowledge slipping into eternity away from you if I did not give heed or pay attention to the declaration and follow through please know that I would not be where I am to enjoy the revelation for the moment without follow through means you will be subject to the oppressor's teaching since you will be locked out of the eternal realm the remedy or prescription offered to our lack is Christ's declaration leading to access to the glory 2 Peter 1.4 which is healing from the spiritual coma 
our access to the glory is possible only because we exist as original spiritual creations and because Christ exists as our eternal Christ suspended in this state of eternal separation from his glory. Please recognize what I'm saying. Please recognize the depths of anguish of our God who suffered on our behalf so that he could be our buffer so that he could be the one who hides us in himself and take us to his own glory please turn with you to Isaiah 59 and verse 16 it is because God gave himself since he saw no man Isaiah 59 16 since he saw no man that he could create who would miss the weaknesses of Adam which was even present in Jesus and this is significant that Jesus took on this form after the inheritance of Adam so that he could depose this place or supplant this weakness through the connection to the eternal realm as an example to all now in speaking of this example in the physical sense we understand that this shadow is not as important as the reality that this shadow represents that God physically manifested himself in the form of a man in order to displace or overcome the inheritance of Adam this, this reality of Jesus Christ becoming a man which we understand I'm underlining is not as important as the reality that this shadow represents which reality is God experiencing what it would be like to be in all the weaknesses of all the sons so as to know how to plan our spiritual creation based on what we would need to overcome and neutralize this lack through the provision of the spiritual works of the Rima age ending in our spiritual creation the spiritual works of the age of spiritual creation is the antidote is the medicine against is the medicine to counteract the poison of our lack which is our lust the spiritual works of the age of spiritual creation is the antidote needed to overcome this lust once we were planted in the physical realm I'd like you then to turn with me please to the first chapter of John and verse 14 where it says in the King James Version and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us where the word is a physical expression for the spiritual works of Christ and the one who connects us to the spiritual works of the Rima age that is the Logos the one who makes the spiritual connection there is no word in the kingdom of God in the eternal realm the Greek word Logos can mean word but there is also a spiritual interpretation of the word which is the spiritual connection and in the sense that we are speaking in spiritual terms 
that is of the reality that exists in the kingdom of God when we say logos it refers to the spiritual connection and not to any physical spoken word I'm speaking of this fact that Jesus is the physical manifestation of God in this realm also please refer to Colossians 2.9 where it says for in him referring to Christ from the end of verse 8 for in Christ it doesn't say in Jesus and it's not speaking of the physical element as is neutralized by what Paul says in the middle of verse 8 after the tradition of men the duplication of passwords after the elements of the physical realm of the world are you there? for not Jesus but in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the divinity tangible in him it's referring to this fact that Christ retained the authority of himself in himself when he stepped out from the innermost sanctuary from inside of the camp that he retained this authority in him as God which gave him access to the glory at will he was not hindered by anything or anyone from re-emerging in the age of glory as he desired is what it is saying that there was a difference between Christ and the Father that this is not this is not what Paul is denying he's not denying a distinction between the Father and Christ please pay attention note what I'm saying for in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of God why? not that he existed in his glory but that he retained access to the glory at his own will since the authority was in him he could not be hindered from moving back and forth in the spiritual ages is what it is saying are you still there? it is because God gave himself since he saw that there was no man Isaiah 59 16 that he could create who would miss the weakness of Adam so that Isaiah 59 16 continues if you'd look at it and wondered that there was no intercessor incorrect translation the Hebrew is polga to impinge there was no one to impinge to encroach on the physical condition to neutralize our effect on God or to neutralize God's direct effect on us who is here therefore his arm brought salvation unto him
where his arm is an extension of his person as Christ is an extension of God and reflects the fact that Christ came out of the ages of glory retaining access to his own glory or the authority to re-emerge in his glory at will. Therefore, Isaiah 59, 16 says, his arm, his own person, an extension of him, not the identity of the glory, but his arm, an extension of his glory, as Christ departed from this glory, so that he could become our eternal Christ, suspended in our weaknesses and condition. He himself in Christ gives us access to the glory is the reason for this. It is because God gave himself and shed his glory to create us and it is because he continues to exist as our eternal Christ that we can approach him for the experience of the glory as he takes us into the age of glory that we can be liberated from our lack and oppression of the physical creation. This is what Galatians 1.4 says. Please turn to Galatians 1.4. which says in the King James Version who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of God and our Father God himself no man gave himself for the sake of the Greek word translated as for is Hooper and can be rendered for the sake of. So we can read Galatians 1 4. Christ God gave himself for the sake of our lack. Hebrews 9 14 says, He being the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, that God offered to sacrifice and did sacrifice himself while he was still God allowed himself to experience the weaknesses and lack of all sons as the means for shedding his glory so that he could create us in order to connect us at the spiritual creation of the Rima age as our deliverance from the lack of the physical creation. It is because we are already there that he can offer us a way out of the oppression of the lower estate. Note that the phrase that was translated as present evil world in Greek is anistemi poneros ahion, the present evil or hurtful in effect or influence age, not world, that we would be delivered from out of this present evil hurtful in effect or influence age because God gave himself for us and it says age not world it is a broader statement indicating the physical realm and its influence separation from loss that dominates it that we could be delivered because God gave himself for our lack so that we could be delivered from out of the oppression that we so embrace in this life that is truly an existence. Whereas 
the wider church looks towards the end of the world and indulges itself in eschatology and times prophecy we look backwards to the time that existed before the physical creation when everything had already been completed in Christ they look for the destruction of the world we look for the everlasting kingdom of God that is not subject to destruction they speak of the destruction process that will culminate in Jesus' second coming as is prophesied in scripture we look to the time before his first coming we look to the time before he shed his glory the acute significance of Matthew 8 2 is that Jesus is both a shadow of the Father and of the eternal spirit Christ at the same time in the same verse in the same event so what is so significant about this fact it proves that the Father and the eternal Christ suspended as if on the eternal cross where he is pinned to our condition where the nails that hold him to the eternal cross where the nails that pin him to our condition are our weaknesses and sin we are the ones responsible for Christ being suspended between the physical condition and God eternally we are responsible for the revolting fact of Christ's conditions and we are the one to cause this revulsion in God what Matthew 8 to proves is that the Father and the eternal Christ suspended are the same person as is embodied physically in the Son of Man that Jesus is a physical manifestation of the Father and Christ at the same time why why do we say that the fact that Jesus shadows the Father in glory and Christ at the same time is proof that the Father and Christ are the same person because no one else in scripture shadows both the Father and Christ at the same time a seemingly obvious fact to me that may not be so plain for us to see Abraham shadows the father and Isaac shadows the son but neither shadow both father and son at the same time or at any time in their lives yet we have Jesus shadowing both the father and Christ in the very same verse and in the very same event or circumstance King David shadows Jesus as is evidenced in Psalm 22 and in other instances David as the father of Solomon may shadow the father but not at the same time I'm coming to the conclusion and this is probably the easiest part to understand and it is easily the most offending one before we close let us talk about us let us talk about you and I because perhaps we all have become too comfortable in the teaching on the Christian minority let us get up close and personal are you threatened or offended in any way up to now I have been speaking of the Christian minority from a historical point of view as it shadows what we ought to be as the fellowship of God as God's fellowship as the fellowship with God because this is what we mean when we say church in the upper room reflecting Hebrews 12 22 to 24 
And this is what we mean when we say the Christian minority. Now if the Christian minority that we identify with has access to the glory of God and can exercise the mind expanded by the healing of the glory in the spiritual works of the eternal realm and can communicate with God via the spiritual revelation and submission to Christ if we say we are the ones who can see Christ and have faith and are persuaded to submit if we say we are the ones who can be delivered from the oppression of the physical realm if we say we are the ones who can be delivered from our lust continuously through our experience of the glory if we say we can interact with God who abides in the glory of the eternal realm if we say we recognize our lack in our lust that has a tendency to control us since we are aware of the irresistible force that draws us to the things of the world and since we say we can overcome this irresistible force through submission to Christ then what sort of people ought we to be? what kind of example should we be? what type of light should we shed? if all of this is true of the Christian minority then what type of life should we then lead? how should we conduct ourselves in our everyday lives and should our lives be different from our example on Sundays while we're in church and how should we conduct ourselves in church on Sundays and how should we interact with each other as members of the same assembly if we say we are united together in Christ in the eternal realm then how should we stand in the world together or separate if we say we are healed by the atmosphere and culture of the eternal realm then is it possible that societal culture bind us to the wicked then is it possible for us to be bound in the culture of the world around us to conclude referring back please to Matthew 8 and 2 if you'd look at the verse one more time before we close the central issue of Matthew 8 1 to 3 is one of recognition understand that it is recognizing that we are lost as we exist in our everyday lives the central issue of Matthew 8 2 is that the leper recognized all the signs that indicated that he was a leper diseased in need of healing the leper is a shadow reflecting our lack in the physical condition as we abide in our natural existence unhindered by the church and Christ and unrestrained from our lust the central issue in our lives should be the recognition that left to our own devices and our own capabilities we exist in a state of constant ongoing lack that is defined in its purest form as existing constantly in a state or condition that is offensive to God underline that please since we exist in a state that is way short of his perfection referred to as the glory all of Israel did not recognize that they existed in lack in the disease of the leper just one leper came forward to the Lord because he recognized his lack the wider church and the members thereof do not confess their lack by asking for healing they pretend to ask but only in a form not in truth with lips Matthew 15 9 the wider church and members do not confess their lack by submitting to the spiritual revelation in Christ they confess with their lips and tongues 
but the arrogance is revealed in their lack of eternal realm access, evidenced by their continued existence in darkness, shadows and image worship, emphasizing the word and physical works. Their protestations that they are Christian is denied by confession of what they believe. The fact that they are believers and that their faith is constituted of what they believe indicates their true and real rejection of Christ's declaration thereby making them prisoners of the physical realm. Part of the purpose of the church is to battle with the assembly instigating us to recognize our individual lack and see Christ as the remedy, as the antidote for universal lack. Inspiration into the eternal realm is granted because we are submissive to Christ and manifest the physical teaching defined by Christ, thereby affording others the eternal realm access opportunity. The church is here to instigate recognition of lack by inspiration and by teaching directly of this lack by defining this universal lack as the existence of the physical condition in the natural man or the old man what sets us apart from the wider church is the fact that the Christian minority like the leper in Matthew 8 1 3 recognizes that in our normal circumstance, Dios, and while we remain outside of access to the eternal realm without Christ, that we are lepers in the eyes of God and cannot approach this holy God without notice and warning, in the same way as the leper had to cry out, unclean, unclean, to anyone approaching them according to the law. Leviticus 13 45 and 46 please Leviticus 13 45 and 46 and beginning with verse 44 he is a leprous man he is unclean the priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. That's a strange place to put the significance of the disease in his head. That the disease in his, is in his head. Leprosy is not only in one's, in one's head. It is in every part of the body whereby the flesh is consumed by this disease it is placed the head is placed at the end of verse 44 to indicate the significance of the carnal mind that this aspect of our not being able to function in the spiritual works of the eternal realm means that we can be easily deceived and seduced away from the declaration of Jesus Christ that this disease of the physical condition begins in the carnal mind that we can be easily swayed away away from following through in the declaration because we are oppressed and are accessed easily by the oppressor who sways us who takes us easily away from following through in the declaration of Jesus Christ that the deception that keeps us stuck in the physical condition takes place in the mind. The battle for our soul